So the Laplace operator, or Laplacian, is, um, well, we denote it by a capital delta, this triangle here. It's the divergence of the gradient of a function. And so it turns out mathematically that that ends up being the sum of the second partial derivatives, uh, where you sum over all space, uh, spatial variables. So the, the meaning of this, so this idea of divergence of gradient, it takes a bit to sort of wrap your mind around. But, but the meaning of the Laplacian is that it tells you how much the value of u at a point x compares to the average value of u near that point x. And this can actually be uh, made fairly precise. So it turns out that, um, for instance, the Laplacian of u is going to be strictly positive if and only if the average value of u um, near x is greater than the value itself, and that the Laplacian of u is equal to 0 at a point if and only if, um, and we can make the average quite quite precise, and say that when we uh, look at the normalized integral over, say, x minus y equals r, so uh, a circle of radius r, then the value of the, uh, the function there, sorry, the average value of the function over this small region is actually equal to the value of, of u at the center point. And all of this also works in higher dimensions. So I've written this here as if it's a function um, in, in R2. But if you had a function in R3, then all you would need to change is uh, this, this normalizing constant right here. Um, replace that with the surface area of uh, uh, the sphere of radius r. And the exact same equation would hold. And it's also true that um, since it holds for every circle, It'll also hold for the disk. So u of x will be equal to the average value of u on the entire disk centered at, at this point x. Um, and in higher dimensions, you can look at the average over the ball instead of the sphere in the same way. So in fact, this, this sort of averaging property here can actually be used to define the meaning of the Laplace operator in more general contexts. So instead of thinking of some nice region in Rn, maybe you want to study uh, diffusion on um, a graph. So a graph in the sense of graph theory. So some discrete structure where you've got links and nodes and edges and blah, blah, blah. Well, computing a derivative might not be an available option in, in a discrete context like that. But looking at the average value of the neighbors of a point, well, that's, that's something that you can definitely very readily do. And so there's a lot of work in um, computer science and data analysis and image processing and so on and so forth that uses a, a discrete Laplacian defined this way. OK, and so the upshot of all this is the following maximum principle. So solutions to Laplace's equation, Laplace uh, u equals 0. Um, and I should have written this right here. These are called harmonic functions. And I guess I should say u is harmonic on some region if the Laplacian of u is equal to 0 on that region. OK, so the maximum principle says that harmonic functions can only have a maximum value on the boundary. 
So more precisely, suppose we've got some region which is uh, open and connected. So it's one piece. Um, and um, and suppose that the closure of this region, so that means this region, and we also throw in the boundary of this region. Suppose this is compact. If you haven't seen the word uh, compact before, it means in this context just it's a closed set uh, and it's a bounded set. OK. So suppose that guy is compact. OK. Then if we have a solution to Laplace's equation um, on omega, and u is um, continuous uh, to the boundary, then u attains its maximum on the boundary. So if u is continuous on the closure of the set, then there's a deep theorem that says it will attain its maximum somewhere on that set. However, if u is also harmonic, so it satisfies Laplace's equation, then the maximum has to occur on the boundary. And furthermore, if u attains its max inside, so not on the boundary, then u is a constant function. 